Late in a landmark verdict, the Supreme Court today ruled that an MP or MLA cannot claim immunity from prosecution if they are accused of taking a bribe for a vote or a speech in the House. Joining us first up, Aryama Sundaram, senior lawyer in the Supreme Court. Thanks very much uh, for being with us. In simple terms, for um, a larger audience, Mr. Sundaram, does this basically mean that cash for votes, a phrase that has been dominant in our political landscape for so long, is now a thing of the past, that that cannot happen again? Well, uh, the pious wish is it will be a thing of the past. But I am afraid that we are too used in India to not having complete faith that our politicians will stick to the law. Having said that, I think this judgment is a very telling judgment. I'll explain to you why. Articles 104, 194 give protection to a legislator for anything which happens within the House. Now, that is obviously very sensible, very practical, because a legislator should be free to be immune from any prosecution for what he does in the House, for what he believes is for the good of his constituency, for the good of the country. And it may turn out that it hurts somebody else, but still he is immune for that. And if he does run foul, then the House itself the Privilege Committee and others will take action against him. Now, what was done very ingeniously was that in a case where someone was charged for taking a bribe to cast his vote as a legislator, he pleaded, my casting the vote is in the House. I am immune from yeah. prosecution. So what I've done is an activity completely immune from prosecution. And this, unfortunately, was upheld by a 3-2 majority of the Supreme Court which is what came up to be revisited, and very gladly so, because the protection is given for the legislator carrying out his official functions and his duties. His official functions and duties don't extend to taking bribes in order to, for him to decide how to cast a vote. I mean, that goes beyond his duties. And the court has very subtly brought out that difference and said when you're charged with corruption or taking a bribe, you can't say I, I was corrupt or took a bribe while I was discharging my functions as a legislator and I, illegal, I did an illegal activity while I was discharging my functions. That will not give you immunity anymore and thank God for that. Tell, if tell, you have committed a crime, an yes. offence which falls under a... Sorry. No, I'm just saying... Um, then you will pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. And that is what the judgment really says. Uh, Mr. Sundaram, you know, we can't change history, but in July 1993, the opposition introduced a no-confidence motion, if you recall. The Congress had 251 votes then, including those yes. from parties which had offered support. This meant that they were a dozen short of a simple majority, and yet they survived by a 14-vote margin. Again, in simple terms, had this law been there then, the government would have collapsed, right? Or this kind of illegality couldn't have taken place. Well, let me put it in a different way. If the legislators were bothered and concerned that by doing this, they will go to jail and be prosecuted, they could not have done it. But assume they had taken the bribe and voted, the government may have survived. But after that, they would have left themselves open to prosecution. So now what has really happened is, with this judgment, before they do this kind of thing, they know that if I'm, find out, if I'm found out, I'm going to jail. And that will be a deterrent against their doing it. But whatever they vote in the House will not go void. That right. will be a valid vote. Sure. But if the man has taken a bribe in order to do that, he will be punished for that under the Corruption Act or so otherwise. The he so the be vote stands, but they'll so that be, will be a deterrent. They'll be punished for that. That's interesting. Mr. Sundaram, thanks very much uh, for joining Absolutely. us. And, Absolutely. And, and, and explaining that. Thanks very much indeed. We are joined by Muhammad Ali Khan. Uh, national spokesperson of the Congress, uh, Tom Vadakan uh, of the BJP, also with us. Uh, Mohammed, let me uh, let me come to you. Uh, uh, let me come to you first. In as much as we talk about what the Supreme Court has ruled today, overturning a previous Supreme Court order, I think it's also important to reflect on a Delhi High Court order, which originally went against Narsimha Rao following the allegations of corruption, which was then overturned by the Supreme Court. Now that yeah, High Court I order did. said. A Prime Minister must, and I quote, a Prime Minister must not sustain his power and position 
on the crutches of corruption. It is unfortunate that P.V. Narsimha Rao thinks he was justified under Article 75.2 of the Constitution. Right. Um, isn't this, in a sense, a, a stinging indictment of, Narsim, of the late Narsimha Rao? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that for three reasons. First, this passage that you referred to was considered by the Honorable Supreme Court in appeal. And thereafter, the Supreme Court applied its mind to the issue. And then, after considering all of the High Court's findings, decided to overturn the issue. Number two, you must remember at this point of time, the issue never went to prosecution. That's one of the important things Mr. Sundaram was saying. The issue never went to prosecution because this issue stood in the way, that because they were legislators, they could not be prosecuted. So till date, what it has, has not today, been established Mohammed? to that Mohammed, extent. in light of what has happened today. Yes, of course, in light of what has happened today, as Dr. It, it, it said, just makes that, that yeah. Delhi High Court judgment valid again, right? Well, I wouldn't say that. That opinion of the Delhi High Court was on very specific facts and circumstances. And we can't revisit those facts and circumstances with the benefit of hindsight. This is a judgment going forward, and it's a very welcome judgment. It reconciles a position of common sense and a position that of which whose time has come. And that's what Dr. Singhvi said earlier in the day, that the Congress welcomes this judgment, that this is a judgment that we wholeheartedly support. We have read the judgment. It's a 135-page judgment, yeah. 200 paragraphs, and there is not a word in it that we can disagree with. In fact, uh, Mr. Barakkan is here. He's a very senior leader of uh, earlier the Congress and now the BJP. I would, in fact, urge him to read this judgment as well, because there is a lesson here for the BJP in the states of Himachal, Bihar, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Karnataka, and Goa, where attempts have been made to sway legislators to vote a particular way. And no, because but, but, earlier but, but, they had this Mohammed, protection that could Mohammed, be questioned. But hold on half a second. And this question is for Mr. Tom Vadakan. It's actually for you as well. Yes, of course. In just the, 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 the lines above what I just read out, yes. in that same Delhi High Court order was a beautifully phrased sentence yes. which goes, and I quote, uh, and I quote, power intoxicates the best hearts as wine the strongest heads, but then nobody can thrive on corruption. It is the froth on water an inch deep, and then there is mud. This is what Justice Jaspal Singh said. And there can be no disagreement with that. No, no, there none can't be all. disagreement with that. Absolutely but, none. And but the Congress Tom has been consistent no, 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 in hang its on, position Muhammad, hold on. that we have a zero tolerance policy sure. towards corruption. It right. is but, our but, government, but, I'll just conclude on this one line. It is our government, the UPA too, if you recall, that whenever there was an allegation, not even a proven allegation, but an allegation nonetheless, ministers were made to step down. Heads were made to roll. No, Later no, but, it would turn out that but here, the here's the part, would not Mohammed, bear I, I, I slightly disagree with you. But here you the can Congress say that the there was a Supreme Court order that had a zero which overruled this corruption. High Court order. I take that point. I'm making a separate point. But in point. light of what has happened today... I'm making a separate point, Vishnu. I am saying on corruption, there has to be a zero tolerance policy amongst political parties. Okay. And the Congress has walked that talk. Unlike the BJP, show me one head that has rolled in the last nine years. Tom Vadakan, is it not, uh, I, I don't know if strange is the right word, that Narsimha Rao, somebody honoured with the Bharat Ratna recently, uh, once again back in the news in the context of a judgment which had that judgment existed earlier on, right? It would have totally changed the way history sees Narsimha Rao. Well, uh, Som, uh, good evening to you and to my co-panelist here. Uh, let me put this on record. Article 104 and 105 are privileges that have started this whole exercise. If you read through that, Mohammed uh, would also agree to it that if you read it closely, the kind of immunity that, uh, that grew out of it. And finally, 1998, uh, when the court verdict came in. I think today what has happened is this is something that was had to happen. This is part of India, the new India. When the Congress party recognizes it, they have been walking in the crutches of this kind of activity for quite some time. Uh, six decades or more, uh, they have gone around with immunity on this whole exercise. Now, this young man is talking about a situation where, uh, where there's nothing proved, you know that uh, if the conscience vote is against you and you create a situation like you did in Himachal Pradesh, your dynast support one, one dynast supports one section of society of that uh, of your Congress party and the other dynast is support. So it's a fight within dynast. And in final uh, issue, what happens is that you yourself create the fight and you suffer for it. 
you have done that in Punjab and then you blame the Bharatiya no, Janata Party. No, Mr. Vadakar, why are we talking about this landmark judgment? The no, rhetoric of the, the BJP judgment. against the Congress on dynasts and vice versa, etc., etc. That's stuff that comes up every day. Why don't we talk about this? Tell yes, me about this. This is had to But happen. you haven't answered my As question on Narsimha Rao. I asked you Narsimha Rao who's expected. been given a Bharat this Ratna. This is part of our vision. Bharat Ratna has been given by, by this government to Narsimha Rao. Wouldn't history have seen him in a rather different vein had this judgment come a few weeks earlier? Uh, had, this, had this ruling existed earlier on? So I, I don't know of any law that, uh, that affects retrospectively. If you want to dig deeper, there are many other cases where this can be brought about. We are not going into individual personality, especially a Bharat Ratna Awadi at this juncture. I don't think it's fair to him. He has suffered a lot. And it is the same Congress party who did not uh, let him have the privilege of entering into the AICC office. A dead man was insulted outside. So let's not go into that way, that way right now. My, my point here is this is a ruling that had to happen. We welcome it. We believe that democracy will be clean and we will all... Be very happy. Okay, let, let, let's hope so. Uh, uh, Mr. Barakar, have a second. Mohammed has a point. Go ahead, Mohammed. Well, I was listening to Tom Sahab, and it's uncertain to me which boat he's riding in. Does he welcome the judgment and then indict the Congress for its past sins, or does he say that let bygones be bygones? Because I, quite, uh, I can't quite I understand not the which only now is now. Who's now me aap hai. So, but but I didn't interrupt you, Tom Sahab. I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you, Tom Sahab. Let me just make my point. I mean, Tom Sahab, let me make my point. Let me make my point. Please, let me make my point. Let there be no confusion. No, no, no. I am confused by your response. But nonetheless, I have a different point to make. You need not be confused. My point to you, Tom Sahab, is what do you say when members of a political party defect to another political party? What do you say to those members? Tom Sahab, Tom Sahab, if I may, I just have a question to you. Over the last nine years, number one, Leaders of the BJP have come before the public and proudly proclaimed when they have fallen short that they are the progenitors of Chanakya Niti. Many of you leaders have said that very smugly and very proudly. And when they refer to that, governments fall shortly thereafter. And governments fall with all legislators, regardless of the party in power, defecting to only one party, that is the BJP. Maharashtra, Bihar, you, Himachal Muhammad, Pradesh, you now, proof, Karnataka, Pichli Sarkar. There is no corruption in that. No, of All right, course. Gentlemen, now, now, there is no privilege anymore. 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 Okay, okay, I'm out of time over here. But I'm going to try and bring this back to what the Supreme Court ruled. By reading out one sentence. Gentlemen, one sec, discussion over. Can I just wrap this up with one sentence of what the Supreme Court said today, which is what we are discussing, which is this. And let me quote, bribery indulges in a criminal act, which is not essential for the function of casting a vote or giving a speech in the legislature. As our political leaders on this program slam each other in election season, let us look at the significance of what the Supreme Court has said and perhaps corrected a deeply flawed earlier judgment. We leave it there.